problem uh, sets us up by asking us to think about a sequence, and the values of that sequence are only integers. Right? So this is a sequence of integers. Uh, and we'd like to know under what circumstances might a sequence of integers be convergent. So what were your thoughts on this? What are some of the things you came up with if you worked on this problem? Or maybe I'll ask you too, Ali, sort of where are you getting hung up in this, uh, in this? The thing about the integers uh, is that two different integers have to be at least how far apart from one another? One. Right, they have to be at least one unit apart from one another, right? Um, there's no way for us to get integers that are as close together as we like, right? Which is in the spirit of the definition of convergence, says for all epsilon greater than zero, no matter how small, so let me get that definition over here on the side again, right? For all epsilon greater than zero, no matter how small, there exists a capital N such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N, we have that the absolute value of the difference between Sn and the limit is less than epsilon. And so what Danielle is saying is that if I pick an epsilon which is less than 1, so let's say I pick epsilon as 1 half, or maybe I pick epsilon equals 0.1 or something like that, right? Then what this definition would require of us, let me try and sketch a picture, and then your job will be to somehow convert this picture into words. Let's suppose that this horizontal line is the horizontal line y equals l, where l is the limit of my sequence. But if my sequence consists only of integers, then we can kind of imagine that whatever the sequence looks like, you know, sort of maybe it's bouncing around and doing some stuff, who knows. So the picture here would be that all of these, uh, all of these elements on the y-axis would all have integer values, you know, k, l, m, whatever. So these are all integers in this picture. Um, and the thing is that if l is our limit, and I pick an epsilon, which is pretty small, which is smaller than 1, so if I pick epsilon to be, I don't know, 0.1 or something like that, then what we would really be asking is we would be asking this sequence of integers, so let me put it this way, how can a sequence of integers uh, let's say how can a sequence of integers enter a horizontal strip, let me say it this way, because we're kind of thinking about it on a graph, right? Horizontal strip of radius 0.1, given that distinct integers differ by at least one. Maybe instead of putting can here, let me say how can. So all my integers are at least one unit apart from one another. So it would be like, kind of like a middle school dance where everybody stays like an arm's reach away from one another, right? Um, what's the only way that we can converge, that we can create a sequence of people that converges to me if it were at a middle school dance? because the little radius around myself needs to be as small as we like. So what does that sequence ultimately have to do? If, it is to, if it's going to get into this horizontal strip and stay in that horizontal strip, what does that look like when all of our values are integers? I think Danielle Mayari has sort of given us a hint. Converge to, zero. Converge to well, not necessarily zero, but the distances between so remember, the, another way of framing this definition of limit is to think of it that the distances themselves, Sn minus L, the distance between the nth term and the limit, those distances have to converge to zero, right? Um, and so if the distances have to converge to zero, but those distances will all be integers, what's the only way to have a sequence of integers that converges to zero? catch that? 
the only way for a sequence of integers to converge to zero is for them to become zero at some point and remain zero for the rest of time. Right? That a whole infinite tail of that sequence has to be zero. Let's imagine that maybe this is S1, this is S2, this is S3, this is S4, and all of these are integers. All the tick marks here are integers. Um, and so the only way to make it so that there is a single real number such that, so let's call this our limit here, the only way to make it so that whatever epsilon I choose, my sequence eventually lands in and stays in that epsilon little neighborhood around L. Neighborhood is actually a technical term, by the way. Um, the only way to make that happen for a small value of epsilon, like 0.1, sequence needs to eventually sequence needs to land here and stay here but since this is such a narrow window that we've given ourselves the only way for it to happen is for the distance between our terms and l to become zero at some point and stay zero for the rest of the sequence so what we need is for Sn minus L to equal 0. Another way to say that is that we know that Sn minus L has to be less than epsilon. But if Sn's are all integers, what kind of limit do we think a sequence of integers can have? What kind of a number must the limit of a sequence of integers be, do we think? Can I have a sequence of integers, for example, whose limit is square root of 2? Probably not, because we're not going to be able to get close enough to square root of 2 just by hopping around integers. Right? Can I have a sequence of integers that has a limit 1 half? No, why not? Right, exactly. I can't get close enough to one half. I can get within, maybe I can get within a 0.75 radius of one half, because maybe I can land on zero or one, but I can't get within a 0.1 radius of one half, because I can only land on zero or one. That's as close as I can get. I can't get any closer, right? It's the middle school dance thing. Everybody is at an arm's length from one another, right? Um, so based on that, the limit of a sequence of integers is probably, what kind of number? An integer. Right? And if that's the case, then the left-hand side of this inequality, Sn minus L, that's got to be an integer minus an integer, which means that left-hand side is going to be an integer. And so if I pick an epsilon, which is less than 1, then that forces this absolute value to be an integer, which is positive integer, sorry, non-negative integer, which is less than 1. But what does that mean? It has to be 0, right. So that's the, this is the, this becomes the criterion that we need, right. Um, and just to fill in the rest of the quantifiers, we need that there exists an n such that for all n greater than or equal to n, we have Sn minus L is equal to 0. But now let's think back one more time to the properties of absolute value and ask the question, if the absolute value of a number is equal to 0, then what is that number? Well, that's sort of what we used in the argument up here. Uh, we could probably prove that. If we, if we wanted to. Um, that I, I don't think we need to prove that for this proof, but it's something we could do. Um, but yeah, if we need the absolute value of Sn minus L to equal 0, then that means that Sn minus L is going to equal 0, because only 0 has an absolute value of 0. Oh, I was just trying to say, like, does Sn equal, equal L? Oh, um, it equals L, but not the, the entire sequence doesn't have to equal L. Oh. Right? We just need it to equal L after a certain point. Right? So the sequence can hop around a little bit if it wants to. But at some point, it has to land right on its limit and stay there for the rest of time. Right? 
Um, it's hard to come up with formulas for sequences which do that, but we don't necessarily need to have our sequences defined by formulas, right? Um, so if a sequence of integers is going to converge, it can do whatever it wants to for a while until it finds itself, but then it has to land on that limit and be equal to that limit for the rest of time. So it's not like with sequences of rationals where we can kind of get closer and closer and approach and do that kind of stuff. For a sequence of integers, if it's going to converge, it has to land on its limit and stay on its limit. So that's the moral of the story here.